The technique of overglaze enamelling was innovated in China as far back as 1200 AD. But the 17th century Japanese potter, Sakeda Kakiimon, is credited with having discovered the art of enamelling on glazed porcelain in Japan. Kakiimon ware, as it was known, was made in the kilns of Kakiimon's porcelain works, which were located in Arita in the Hizen province of Japan, well known for the production of porcelain. Kakeimon's objects featured motifs derived from Japanese paintings such as figures, animals and flowers, particularly the prunus blossom and the chrysanthemum. They were painted in a distinctive palette of red, yellow, green, blue and black enamels. Prior to the development of overglaze enamelling, blue and white pottery was produced in the Arita factories. With the onset of enamelling, the blue and white wares could also be enhanced with enamel decoration. The underglazed blue areas were applied on the biscuit porcelain, then glazed and fired. The enamel decoration was then applied to the reserves. These wares were called imari because imari was the port in Japan from which porcelains from Arita were exported. Kakiimon ware was exported to Europe by the Dutch in the later part of the 17th century. The European factories of Meissen and Chantilly copied the decorations extensively in the mid 18th century. And the English factories of Worcester, Bow and Chelsea also chose the Kakiimon style to decorate their wares from about 1755. I have recently acquired this delightful Worcester Kakiimon trio. The Kakiimon refers to the hand painted enamel decorations in the reserves. The underglazed blue areas reflect the influence of the Imari wares which were imported from Japan at the time. This illustrates the areas on the wares which were first decorated in cobalt blue underglaze pigment on the bisque ware fired again and then glazed. The enameled decorations were then meticulously painted in the white reserves. The enamels were then fired on at a lower temperature and the final process was the painting and the firing of the gilding. All three pieces are clearly marked with the Worcester underglaze blue fretted square mark. A very similar pattern to this one is the Queen's pattern. The only difference, as far as I can see, is the treatment on this part of the design and slight variations to the stylized flowers. I'm also delighted to have this Worcester large mug. It is beautifully decorated with the Kakiimo motifs. The prunus, the floral application with gilding, and the two quails. You may have noticed that the quail pattern featured quite a lot on the pieces that I showed earlier. Although this mug is damaged, it is still a great pleasure to be able to hold and examine such an important piece of Worcester porcelain. Happy collecting and thank you for watching.